So I present to you Graham, which you already know. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up to him. Thank you. Uh, hi, you all know me as Graham. Um, I work for Tumblr as my day job. Um, I work on the site reliability engineering team working specifically on uh, online databases. Um, specifically for Tumblr, mostly that means MySQL and Memcache. Um, and we're going to talk about how we use Nix to make that reliable. Um, and I think a lot of this becomes interesting when we look at the scale and, uh, of Tumblr and the complexities of MySQL. This is my Tumblr. Somehow I managed to grab beta.tumblr.com. Um, I would have expected it to be taken. Um, we have over 150 billion posts, uh, 370 million blogs on the network, and we receive uh, 30 million posts a day. Um, that poses remarkable scaling challenges uh, and earns us in the uh, one of the top 25 sites in the United States, um, according to Alexa. Um, we do this with hundreds of database systems, uh, obviously billions and billions of rows, um, and we have just tons of data. And we do it with a tool called Jetpants. <laughs> um, Jetpants is a uh, MySQL automation toolkit. It helps us manipulate uh, MySQL replication topologies and sharding schemes, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, and it's really designed to our specific use cases. Uh, in MySQL, a very simple deployment involves a single server that handles all of the reads and all of the writes. Uh, this has some benefits, but major downsides involve if you, you can only get a big enough server, so you can only hold so much data, and you can only uh, serve so many reads. Additionally, if this one server goes down, everything goes down. Uh, more complicated but more resilient is where you re split the reads from the writes. Uh, so writes still go to the, the master, and then it replicates by sending write instructions down to each replica. Um, in this way, you can scale as, as many uh, replicas as you need to serve as many uh, reads as you need. But again, if you receive too many writes, you can't scale the master other than uh, by buying a bigger server. Also, this can obviously only store as much data as can fit on a single system. Um, in the system, if the master fails, uh, you can still serve reads. Any path that doesn't require writing data can stay online. Uh, this has uh, big advantages if you architect your system correctly. Um, at Tumblr, we use what's called ranged-based sharding in order to split the writes among many different servers. Um, so uh, we do it based on the primary ID, so uh, based on the record that is being stored. Um, this has a lot of benefits, uh, and as a sharding scheme, is pretty pretty good. Um, if a single cluster or a single shard uh, goes away, all the other shards are online, still happy, still serving traffic, still can accept reads and writes. Um, and if a single master goes down, for example, uh, it, it has a much smaller impact. Uh, additionally, there, there are some other sharding schemas that involve uh, like modulus or uh, like a round robin writing. Uh, those can be difficult to scale out after you've set how many you have. It can be very difficult to add more. Uh, with range-based sharding, you simply add more at the end. Um, for an example, if we have three database machines, each accepting 1 through 10, 11 through 20, and 21 through 30, these are primary IDs, um, a new post gets created with ID 14, and it goes into the 11 through 20 bucket, the 11 through 10, and 21 through 30 aren't touched at all. Um, and if we want get more than 30 posts, we can easily create a 31 through 40 or a 31 through infinity, for example. Um, in Tumblr, each of these is actually uh, their own replication topology, so each one has a master and multiple replicas. Um, that way we have data res resiliency and uh, replication to survive failures. Um, those replication topologies have... Uh, issues, and, and in MySQL especially, it's a bit complicated to promote a replica to become a master. If the, a, replica, a master fails, you have to take something which already has the data, tell it it's a master, 
and then convert everything else to read from that. Um, that can be a bit fraught, a bit difficult to do. Um, if you mess up the, the parameters when you're setting up MySQL, you can um, accidentally ruin your data set. JetPants handles this for us. Um, in this hypothetical cluster, we have a master with receiving writes and two replicas receiving reads. If the master dies, it no longer accepts writes, but we can still serve reads. Um, we then take one of the replicas and set it as a master and take the other replica and configure it to replicate from that new master. Um, we then destroy the old infrastructure and clone from one system to the next to create a new replica. And now we're back to where we started, a healthy system um, with enough duplicates of the information. Um, now, <laughs> the, the difficult thing about this system is it's <laughs> very challenging to test. Uh, <laughs> and for a long time, it was entirely manual. We would have actual database servers um, in our data center that we would uh, clone and replicate and kill and test, and, and it took a long, long time to do this. These servers take quite a long time to configure because of their, uh, how unique they are. And uh, in order to, to test them, you, uh, you need... I have solved this with Nix. And in order to do that, I needed to set up Collins, which is our asset tracker, um, in order to track what hardware we have. We need real systems which we can SSH into. We have to have a functioning network so they can talk to each other and so they can replicate. And they need to be actually MySQL and as many of these as real as possible in order to replicate production so that we don't accidentally do something in production that breaks something. Um, in early, <laughs> in early uh, 2017, there was a hack week at work and I thought, well, this would be a cool thing to try, but it'll never, certainly never work. Um, by the end of the week, uh, it worked. Um, <laughs> and uh, this was me. <laughs> and shortly after, my coworkers and my CTO. Um, this Hack Week project earned me the CTO Choice Award, which is, was pretty fun. Um, this, uh, this testing pr framework was completely automatic. You, you set it, you, it runs, it shuts down, it tells you if it works or not. Um, it was expected to take six months to a year to implement this because of the complicated interactions and requirements. Um, it was expected to be dog slow. Um, it was expected to use v uh, VMs. It was expected to use Puppet. Um, each of those things are <laughs> very slow. Um, it ended up, as I noted, it took a week to build the first prototype, um, and it takes six minutes to run a complete test. Um, I've ended up making a DSL around the testing system. Um, here you can specify a number of spare DBs. This is just spare hardware that's ready to be used. Number of replica DBs. It starts out by creating a replication topology, and here you can set the number of replicas to have. And then you can specify a list of phases to use, of test phases to run. Um, each of those are just bash wrappers. Um, starting spare DBs, uh, if you have six, it'll just have six that are not associated into any cluster. Um, to start in replica DBs, if you set two or three, uh, <laughs> you will have three replicas on the one uh, master. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I use the monolith um, <laughs> uh, because just like in the movie, this triggered a remarkable evolution in how we develop JetPants. Suddenly, we were less afraid to go change that scary SSH code that could let you do nasty things by mistake. Or you could put new lines in your SQL, which is a pretty common thing to do. Um, and it, it's, been, it's been really remarkable help. Um, I'd like to walk through an example test. I think that uh, would be interesting. Um, this is a shard master promotion. So this is that case we had talked about before where the master has died. Um, the replicas, there will be two replicas in the cluster. Uh, so when the st test starts up, before it runs any code, this is what it guarantees will be there, a single master and two read replicas. Um, in the test phase, I have a, this wrapper takes arbitrary Ruby code and runs it inside the JetPants environment. Um, this accepts a pool, which is the entire shard, or the shard range, which is in this case posts one through infinity. It selects the master and shuts it down. Um, this is a, to simulate a failed master. 
Um, at this point, after that test phase runs, the master is dead. It can no longer accept writes. Reads are still OK. I then run a JetPants promotion, which is just a, a standard phase. It's just a bit of bash to run. Um, it calls JetPants promotion. It calls passes demote. Um, the master always starts at 2.10, um, and the replicas are 2.11, 2.12, and so on for the, the spares. Um, so this will take the, ma the old master and replace it with a, a replica. Um, we are now at this, at this stage where we have the new master, uh, new master and the old replica still down there. Um, and then we can assert certain things about, about the state at the end. Um, so at this point, we can ensure that the master is 2.11 as specified previously. And actually, a behavior of JetPants is by default to uh, configure the old master to become a replica of uh, the new cluster. Um, so we ensure that the old master is now um, a replica. Um, and that involves some automatic logic to start MySQL. Uh, these run now on every pull request to JetPants. Um, they are, there's a, about a half dozen tests, so it does take about 30 minutes. Um, but <laughs> that's a lot faster than waiting for even a single manual test uh, because of how slow it is to run those te the manual tests. Um, yeah, it's been really remarkable. And honestly, uh, <laughs> uh, using Nix and Jenkins has taken away almost all of the pain of Jenkins. Um, I think it took two, maybe three commits to get our Nix build working inside of Jetpan uh, Jenkins, which is astonishing. Uh, <laughs> really nice. Um, additionally, we are using Nix to develop an internal database. Um, the database integrates with Jetpants. Uh, it's based on Go. And it has quite a few development tools. Um, Golang loves dev time tools for code generation and whatnot. Um, and it's a quite involved build process. Uh, there are three developers on the team building this. Uh, all three have embraced Nix and have quite liked the process. Uh, it took setting up a dev environment from however long it would take to mm, 10 minutes to download the dependencies. Um, as I said, no time wasted on Jenkins. If we make a change to the build process, we know it before we push the Jenkins. Um, we know if it works before we push it. Um, and using the Nix shell, obviously, uh, lets us make sure we're following the same steps the build steps do. Um, the tests do integrate with Jenkins so, or JetPants. So every time this internal database runs, we run the full suite of JetPants tests. Um, the modularity uh, that the module system affords us has made that incredibly easy. Um, the, not to mention how incredible the Nix OS test process is. That's a remarkably um, innovative idea, I believe. Um, this, using Nix for this deploy process has given us wonderful traceability. It's uh, very trivial to know exactly what went into the build process and how we ended up with this broken build in production. Um, and uh, has, has made it much simpler to diagnose um, why something is not working. Um, unfortunately, we are not using Nix to actually deploy this database. Uh, it is Go, so it only depends on uh, the linker, uh, the interpreter. Um, so we, we do have to patch elf the interpreter out to refer to the standard, um, a standard interpreter path. And then we deploy the artifact with Puppet. Um, in the future, something that we've been working on is deploying memcache with a netboot. Um, we serve uh, 3 million cache hits per second, and that's cache hits, not including misses. Um, we have many nodes. I didn't even bother to count because it would take too long to find all the use cases. Um, and uh, uh, just to explain what memcache is real quick, is it's a very, very simple database. It's key value store. You put data, you get data, um, and you can increment and decrement. Um, there is no persistence, so if it reboots, you've lost all your data. If you stop start memcache, you've lost all your data. Um, it's an incredible tool for making Tumblr fast. Um, right now, we deploy it onto dis nodes with disks, and we deploy it with Puppet. And sometimes those disks fail, and that is very annoying when your service is memcache. It doesn't matter if the disks have failed because we don't ever touch the disks. Um, the only thing that touches the disks is Puppet, and so when the disks fail, we just have to shut it down anyway. Um, so some time ago, I set up a uh, Pixie boot. I had a Pixie boot support so that our provisioning infra infrastructure can boot NixOS. Um, 
and started doing a, for another hack day, a net booted uh, memcache box. I have that working. Um, the remaining process is integrating it with our monitoring tools. Um, it's quite likely we'll do a production pilot early 2018. Um, we'll see. Uh, that's we are hoping to get that scheduled. We just had a recent incident, which would make it quite nice to uh, to be net booting these instances instead of running off the disk. Um, yeah. Any questions? Okay. Um, is the PXC netboot uh, going to be open sourced? Uh, NixOS already has built in support for PXC. Right. Um, in fact, the packet provisioning infrastructure uses that um, tooling extensively, and that is open source. Um, the specific tooling that Tumblr uses is probably not going to be too generic outside of what Nix packages already supports. Um, I can't stress enough how wonderful the Nix packages in this is in this regard. Um, you're, when you import Nix OS, there's a system, and then there's like a netboot IPixy attribute by default, and you can just use that and be done. Sorry if you mentioned this already. So your JetPens test, do they use the uh, QEMU uh, testing infrastructure? Yep. They, um, let me just go back. The make test, that's the make test that's in Nix packages. Yeah, it's the exact same uh, uh, QEMU testing that we use. Uh, behind you. Did you? Last question. Yeah, so as you know, with our KMU test, we often have these uh, random failures uh, due to timing or uh, high load on the host. So do you ever have those kinds of problems? <laughs> um, so we did. Um, by this, our solution is not very elegant. We just run one test at a time. Uh, and uh, we only run a few simultaneous builds on the host at any given time. We're not fully utilizing the capacity of the host, so we don't typically run into those problems. Um, yeah. I was hoping to find a nice solution as part of that, but <laughs> I have not. All right. Thank you.